guys. Hibiscus Moon here with hibiscusmoon.com. And today I want to talk to you about, this is a really informal thing I'm going to do here because I was just about to light a candle. And I wanted to show you the my preference for candles that I've been using lately. So here's the deal. I love candles. I used to love Yankee candles. I was like a Yankee can candle junkie. Um, and then I knew that they were bad for you and I was still using them. Like, I think I, st I quit Yankee candles altogether because my friends and I were like getting all the scents and everything and I knew they were bad. I knew they were putting black soot in the air everywhere. I knew they had the lead wicks and all. I knew the evil of Yankee candles, sorry. Um, and hey from LA, hi Sorrel, hi Jennifer. So um, I still kept using them and then I quit using them about like seven years ago, I, I stopped. Um, but they've got some amazing scents, but it's all chemical laden crap. It's all shit, guys. You don't want to be breathing that stuff. It's all just, you know, they know the scents to put in there to stimulate parts of your brain that make you feel good, but it's making your body feel bad. And I think inherently it might on the surface make you feel good, but really in the long term, it's making you probably feel bad energetically, um, mentally, and uh oh, no, no, no. My computer wants to restart for some update later. Not right now. All right, so um, not good for you. Plus, there's lead in the wicks, so unhealthy for your lungs, so unhealthy for your environment. Toxic load, forget about it. I mean, people are wondering why so many people have so many things that are going on right now, diseases, illnesses, cancers, and we are just loaded up with toxins in our environment every which way, every which way. So anyways, no to those highly scented, wonderfully scented candles, no. Okay, so this is what I've gone to. Uh, I was looking for non-petroleum candles. Um, there are lots of options out there. You can go with soy if you're okay with that, but I don't know, something about soy, most of the soy is GMO, I've heard, so I'm not loving the idea of burning something that's genetically modified in my environment if I can avoid that. Um, so beeswax candles are great, and there are other options. There are other things you can go for. Um, so I really wanted something that was pure through and through. All cotton wick, you know, nothing in the wick that's going to make it last longer or any of that. Not looking for that. And encased in glass because I tend to forget candles sometimes burning. And, you know, I have a little altar over here that I'll often have candles burning on. And sometimes I'll just leave my space and... I've done it before where the candles burned all night and you know like those novena candles you know those are great because they're supposed to last seven to nine days and you can just burn them you're not supposed to leave them unattended but they're encased in glass so they're safer um, but those are uh, petroleum based and really unhealthy to have burning in your environment I used to use those all the time too you might see in some of my videos where I have them so anyway what you can do is, and there's lots of places you can find these, go online and just get a beeswax candle that's already put in a glass container with a cotton wick. Just go on Google and type that in. There's so many different sellers that have them. A lot of people on Etsy. You can go on Amazon and find them. Just looking for a beeswax candle with a cotton wick. Okay, they're not very beautiful. They're not going to be brightly colored to match the season and all of that. But here's what I like to do. So I will take sometimes, depending on whatever the season is, some incense. Um, I have this for Ostara, so I'll use it all the way through to May 1st. And I will just sprinkle that in there. This has got um, meadowsweet and heather flowers and lavender flowers in here. So I'll sprinkle that on top of the, the candle. You see there? And just wrinkle it around so it's kind of evenly spaced. I've, I've been doing this, that's why the candle looks kind of dirty and melted down because as I do this, I, you know, every time I go to reburn the candles, I kind of anoint them. And um, as the candle burns down, the wax burns down, it takes the energetics, the vibrational frequencies down into the candle with it. Okay, and then 
I will take, and my essential oils for the season right now are lemon and fennel. And if you have not smelled this combo together, oh my goodness, you're in for a treat, a total treat. These two together are so yummy. They're so spring. It's all about that cleansing and fertility and freshness and starting anew. And by the way, this is like very Italian smelling to me because I, I am Southern Italian 100% through and through. And fennel and lemon is two common ingredients in a Sicilian bakery. And it reminds me of my grandmother's, my great aunt's cookies. So I really love this scent together. All right, so I'll take a little bit of the lemon on my finger and I will just put it on the rim. So this is kind of like anointing your candles with the energetics of whatever it is you want to bring in. Okay, and then, oh, there was another crystal I wanted to bring in, but it's in the other room. So we're just going to use rose quartz today. Okay, ever see these little crystal chip bottles in stores and wonder, what can I do with those? What can I use them for? Sometimes they come in a set. Well, I do all kinds of things, crafty things with them. So th these are rose quartz chips. Get the cork out. And I'll just sprinkle them in. Okay, so I'll show you what it looks like from the top view. Very pretty, actually. See? Okay, and so as the candle burns down, the crystals and the incense and the oil will actually burn throughout and go to sink down into the wax. So the more you use the candle, the more infused it gets. And then when it completely burns down to the bottom, you're going to have really nothing left but just like a thin layer of the wax and the crystals there. And sometimes the wax is so thin I can pick the crystals out with a tweezer and reuse them. So that's always nice. Um, a lot of you recycle the end of the candles, so then you can just recycle it all up into something else. All right, so let's go ahead and just light it. And it's quick and easy. And the space is going to smell really good. And it's just going to be lovely. Yeah. So I'll usually have two candles like that going on my altar. And it's just a quick and easy way to infuse your crystals in, or infuse your candles with crystals, crystal energy and other vibrational frequency energy. So if you guys um, have any questions really quick, uh, this was a really quick live stream, I know, but it, there's really not much to it, right? And so if you guys have other ideas too, I'd love to hear. Okay, love our beeswax candles. Yes, thank goodness for beeswax, right? great alternative. I buy beeswax sheets and roll my own with a cotton wick. I usually add an herb and some essential oil. Great! So Lisa's already making her own. Lisa, do you ever put them in glass? Because I love the look of those raw beeswax candles, but I just can't be trusted. I like to dress my candle pillars with stones, herbs, and essential oils. Yes, Jennifer, I'm totally about that. I love it. Jill said, oh my god, my daughter found those little crystal bottles, and yes, I totally wondered what to do with them. Thank you. Oh, you're welcome. Good. I'm glad you can put them to some use. Um, Kendra said, how often do you do this to your candles? How long do you let it burn? Well, it just depends. Sometimes they burn all day long. Um, they last a pretty long time. I usually dress them each time I go to light them, usually, unless I didn't burn it very long the time before. And um, I can still see the incense and the candles, I mean, and the crystals and all of that at the top. Then I'll, I'll leave it and I'll just relight it and I won't redress it. Hi, Debbie. Debbie said, this is fun. <laughs> Esther said, isn't it bad to heat crystals? It depends on the hardness of the crystal. I find that quartz can handle it. Um, it's What's bad is extreme changes in temperature, um, really extreme temperature changes with crystals, with any crystals. Quartz are relatively hard on the most hardest scale. There are seven. I've never had a problem with like them popping or 
bursting or anything like that. I've never microscopically or even with a you know, hand lens looked at them really close to see what happened. But if you think about it, crystals are formed in the rock cycle. Mama Earth's rock cycle is all about extremes change of energy and everything that's happening. And they're eventually going to, you know, with whatever happens to my crystals, my whole collection and everything that I have, eventually they are going to go back to Mama Earth at some point, right? Don't know when, don't know how, but when they do, at some point they'll get down in there into the Earth and then the Earth will do what it does. The rock cycle is all about um, metamorphosis and heating through the igneous part of the volcanic rock par part of the cycle and then um, sedimentary rock and grinding them up and tearing them up into lots of little pieces. So they're already in chips. I don't find it like anything bad to be doing to them, you know, by putting them in a candle and heating them because at some point they've been heated in the past. They were, they, they were born of a super saturated heated solution and that's how they became crystals. And at some point in the future, they will be going back to that. And they're almost there right now. I mean, they're tiny little chips, right? So, and, and like I said, I've never really seen anything happening. Now, I'm not, not to say that if you use some other kind of crystal chip, that something might happen with it depending on its hardness. But usually those little crystal bottles, those are usually all quartz-based crystals as far as I can think of. Garnet aren't quartz-based, but I've done it with garnet chips too and they're able to handle it. So that's a good question. I liked diving into that one. Okay, um, how do you remove the wax from the crystal once you've used them? Okay, Deborah, when there's like a little layer at the bottom left to get it out, put it in the freezer. After it's been in the freezer for a little bit, it's gonna contract a little bit and just boop, tap, Turn it upside down, it'll pop right out. Um, what other crystals do you like to use besides quartz? Well, Serena, like I said, I usually only use the ones that come in those little bottles that are already broken up into little chips. I do have Moldavite chips, which were very hard to find, um, and those don't come in those little bottles. You just have to do a search. I think I got them on Etsy. I also have Golden Topaz chips that I've done that this with too. And like I said, I've never had an explosion or anything pop or anything bad happen by heating them up in the candles. Okay, um, I have used crystals in jar candles. The energy is beautiful. Yeah, I think it's a great, oh, and it smells good. Mmm, smells really good. Uh, Jennifer said, just be careful not to get certain crystals wet. Well, again, Jen Jennifer, same thing. Um, yes, some crystals, again, depending on their Mohs hardness, I usually go with a guideline of anything with a Mohs hardness of five and under, I don't wet. Doesn't mean they're going to melt like selenite here. Um, I've had selenite underwater for seven days. What did happen to it is it lost its beautiful luster. So that nice sheen kind of dulled a little bit, um, not too much. So if like I put this in a bathtub, not much is gonna happen to it. It's not gonna melt away into nothing. But if you wanna preserve the aesthetic quality and the sheen of it, then yeah, you don't wanna get it wet. Some crystals that contain iron, like this hematite, if you get it wet, you can see that little bit of oxidation, the rust in the middle there. Okay, so the iron will start to oxidize, it'll rust. So there's certain precautions to, you know, bear in mind, but for this, I don't, I don't worry about any of that. Okay, guys, I hope that this um, sparks some ideas for you or you give it a try if you do, or if you have any ideas of your own to share, like some of you have been doing already, please post it in the comments. I'd love to hear, um, I'd love to do stuff like this and, and share it with everybody and find out what you guys are all doing. Okay, everyone, bye, have a great day.